Okay, uh, so we have smiley face guy pulling these three guys along on a toboggan or three toboggans and there's a rope between them and we're, we're going to try to figure out what is the acceleration as well as the tension in, the, in these two ropes between them. So it says a one kilogram is M1. So this is, we'll just make this free body diagram here. Free body diagram. M1. And I'm, I like kind of writing down the masses at the top of them, just so I don't get them mixed up. That's one kilogram. And a two kilogram box is M2, so this will be our free body diagram of M2, bless you. And that's two kilograms. And this will be our free body diagram of M3. And that is a three kilogram. So it wasn't too complex. Boxes one, two, and three are one, two, and three kilograms respectively. And it's being pulled with a 45 Newton pull force. So draw both free body diagrams. I guess it's all three. All three free body diagrams. And find the acceleration of the blocks and all the tension forces. Okay. So, let's look at M3, the easier one here. Why do I think it's easier? Because there's only one rope on it. The other ones have a pull and a pull back and stuff like that. So, it's sitting on a surface. So, that surface is pushing up on it. Why is it pushing up on it? Because gravity is pulling it down to it. Like always. And there's no friction yet. Didn't mention anything friction, so let's not add more work to ourselves. There is a tension force. I'll put T2 in there. Because T2 is attached to that box. Okay? So that's the free body diagram of M3. M2. There's a normal. There's a force of gravity pulling down. And T1 is pulling this way. And T2 is pulling back. Just like yesterday, when we did it in the last example, example number three, you do feel that pull back. If you're being pulled forward and you're pulling someone next door behind you, you do feel that tug behind you. You know that. It hurts your arm. M1, the free body diagram for that one. We have the normal up, the force of gravity down. We have the pull force this way. So F, pull. Sorry, I didn't fill it inside the box. We could call it the applied force if we want to. And T1 is pulling back. OK. Those are the free body diagrams. Let's start with the system. So over here, I'll look at the whole system. Let's write out our givens for this system because it is a little bit more complex before we start Newton's second law. What is the mass of the system? Ooh, that was tough, eh? Good. Six is the answer. Six kilograms. And there's not very many forces acting externally on this system. All the tensions don't count because they p pull and push on internally. But all th there's no friction. If there was friction on any of the boxes, we'd have to include it here. But there's no friction. The only thing that's pulling externally on this system is the pull force. So uh, we add up all the forces, and that's just going to be F pull. There's nothing else. And that is 
54 newtons. So we now we go to Newton's second law, which says if we add up all the forces acting on an object, that will be what we call the net force, and that is what causes the acceleration. So F equals MA is what usually written down for Newton's second law. I write down this one, the sum of the forces equals F net, which equals MA. Okay, the sum of the forces is 54 Newtons. I'm going to go back to, let's do green now. This is 54 Newtons. And that equals the mass, which is 6 kilograms, times A. So A is going to equal 54 over 6 kilograms, which equals 9. So I'm going to write it down here nice and clearly. Acceleration is 9 meters per second squared. And I draw a nice little box around it because that was what was asked for. What is the acceleration? Now, we look at the three objects. Okay, so we'll start on M3 at the easiest one. Why not? So we write down Newton's uh, second law. So the sum of the forces equals F net, which equals MA. Visually on here, I'm going to highlight it and then delete it. But this is what you got to do. This was the question yesterday. How do I get to the next line? I draw an arrow with the direction that I am traveling. And all the arrows that are positive, I write down all the, and then I subtract all the ones that are pulling in the opposite direction, and the ones that are perpendicular to it, I ignore, because those are not causing the motion. So I'm just going to undo that because I don't want to have my free body diagram ruined. I go to, let's go to the green color, and uh, the, sum, the only forces are T2 in that yellow arrow that I just erased. And that has to equal MA. Let's plug in the unknowns. Uh, the known, sorry. Plug in the knowns. T2 is equal to the mass, which is 3 kilograms. And the acceleration is 9 meters per second squared. So this gives us T2 is equal to 3 times 9. 27 units, newtons. I'm just going to do a little bit of maneuvering here of some of my work just so I have room. I'm lucky enough to have this tool. You might have that too on your page, but probably not. I'm going to draw a nice vertical line here, just so I don't sep so I can not overlap. Let's start on the middle box, and we'll start off with Newton's second law: the sum of the forces equals F net, which equals M A. What are the forces? Well, again, people always have the problem. After I write Newton's second law, how do I, where do I go? I draw my arrow in the direction of motion. Which ones are included? T1 and T2. Which one's winning? T1. Isn't the pull force in here? Isn't it the reason I'm moving there's a pull force? Why don't I include that in there? Because if pull force is not touching it. I pull on M1, and then M1 pulls on M2 by the tension 1. So there's no pull force in here. Notice? So we have T2 and T1. I'm just going to get rid of my yellow line. And let's write that down. It'll be T1 
because that's winning. Subtract T2, which is pulling backwards in that motion, and that has to equal MA. Hey, we have just calculated T2, so we can now use that to calculate M1. So we'll continue on. T1 minus 27 newtons is equal to the mass, which is 2 kilograms, times the acceleration, which is 9 meters per second squared. So T1 equals 18 newtons plus 27 newtons. So T1 is equal to You shouldn't have to pull out a calculator. 45? Okay, it's pajama day. Maybe you need a calculator. You need that soothing. Okay. I'm running out of space again. Luckily, I am doing mine digitally with a lasso here. I can move all my stuff over. If not, just find a spot for it. You're probably writing smaller than I am. I hope so. Let's uh, help organize a little bit by drawing a vertical line here. Why am I doing all this? I have all the answers the question asked for. Right? It asked for the acceleration and the tension. So I, I, what it was asking for is the acceleration in T1 and T2. I have the acceleration T1 and T2. Why do I go on? I have all the answers. Well, you do the check. Okay, teach me how to do the check. Here we go. This is how you do the check. So what was the last thing I just calculated? T1. So let's check T1. So I write down Newton's second law. Sum of the forces equals F net, which equals MA. Okay, so I now use this free body diagram. Which one? The one I haven't used yet. There is the direction of motion. And I calculate T1 again. And if it comes up to be 45, then everything works. And please do this check. Don't skip it. Because it really helps you. OK, so let's undo the yellow. And we have F pull minus T1 is equal to MA. F pull is 54 newtons minus T1 is equal to the mass, which is 1 kg times the acceleration of 9 meters per second squared. So we get T1 is going to equal 54 newtons minus 9 newtons. So we get T1 is equal to 45 newtons. And I'm going to turn on my red cloud. And I'm not going to box it because I didn't recalculate something brand new. I was a check. And at this point, I do my double tick marks because the check worked out and I draw my happy face I, I need to do this because that was a lot of work I need to celebrate and I go yeah the check worked out and now let's